What's up everyone? Um, I was just working on the 350Z today. And um, so I just recently got the car and it has new tires on it, like kind of new. Um, and they're staggered. So, you know, you're supposed to have the wider tires in the rear and the skinnier ones in the front, but whoever put the tires on put the 245s in the front and the 225s in the rear so they put them on the wrong way so I was gonna rotate them to the right way and then I found that also on the left front wheel one of the lug nuts was cross threaded so when I was trying to take them off with my impact um, basically the one that was cross threaded just started spinning so all these came off and then this one was spinning. So the uh which that means that the stud itself I guess they're uh, I'm not sure how the studs go on this car, but I'm guessing when you take the rotor off on the hub, you probably just hammer them in from the opposite side. And they might have uh they might be like have an index or something so they don't spin. But when I was trying to take this one off with my impact, the whole thing started spinning. So it's like, great, all right. Um, so what I did so far, I mean, I Googled like how people take them off and there's not really a lot of room to come in here with a cutoff wheel and grind the stud off. So I put these back in and I used a punch and a hammer to hammer through the top of my lug nut and then I was going to try to use drill bits to drill through to at least drill out the threads of the lug nut so I could take the lug nut out. I mean I don't expect to drill all the way through the lug nut and the stud but I'm just going to try to drill through enough to get the lug nut off just so I can get the wheel off and then all I'll need to do is just buy one more stud and one more lug nut and then it'll be solved. So yeah, I was trying to use these uh, chis chisels as a wedge, but they're kind of getting in the way. Um, so I just have a pry bar and uh, since it has this angle on it, it kind of gets out of the way so I can still drill pretty straight without the lug nut and stud spinning on me. I sped up the footage here because it, it did take a good bit of time. Uh, so this just shows me cycling through different drill bits to drill out the threads of the lug nut and the, um, the amount of stud that was actually threaded into the lug nut. So I'm just drilling all that out. And if you're wondering if the pry bar in there scuffed up my wheel, it did a little bit, but the whole wheel had a bunch of scuffs on it. So for me, it wasn't really a concern, but if uh, you have nicer wheels than me, then you might want to find an alternate way to do this or just tape up around the hole where you're drilling out the lug nut. Hello. So, as you can see, today is a new day. Uh, but I finally got the um, lug nut drilled off the stud. Uh, this really wasn't fun. It took a lot of time and patience, um, but I'll show you guys what I did in case you want to do this the same way. Um, yeah, you can see, I don't know if you can see well, but I just drilled right through the lug nut. And then inside there, you can actually see that the, uh, the stud is loose. In the older video, when I was Originally trying to drill it out, I uh, was using these Ryobi drill bits and I was basically just cycling between quarter inch, five sixteenths, three eighths, and half inch. So I would just work my way up and then just start over and I just kept doing that. But these, um, these drill bits are pretty old. Uh, and I mean, there were metal shavings coming out, so it was kind of working, but I just figured it was time to get new drill bits. So I just went to Lowe's 
and um, got some DeWalt drill bits and uh, these are um, titanium coated I guess that's just better for drilling through metal like this uh, this set was like $24 so it wasn't that bad and so then I just started doing the same thing just using uh, quarter inch 5 16 3 8 just working my way up the um So the one that actually drilled through the uh, lug nut was 3 8 So whether or not you really have to drill it out to half inch, I don't really think you do. You could just cycle through quarter inch, 5 16 and 3 8 until eventually your lug nut breaks loose of the stud. Because what you're technically doing is just drilling out the threads of your lug nut and to end uh, drilling out the stud until the lug nut comes off but you can see I actually drilled kind of further into the stud as well um I think I said this before but if you can move the wheel far enough out and have a small enough cutoff wheel to get in between if you can get in between the rim and the uh the rotor and just cut the stud off that way um, that would be a lot easier than doing this but uh, I'm just doing this in a location where I don't have compressed air and the electric cutoff wheel I have is just way too big to fit in there so if you're in the same situation as me this is the way that you can do it so now I'll show you uh, what parts you'll need to fix this. So I just went to my local Nissan dealership and asked them to order me, or asked if they had a stud and a lug nut. Uh, it's funny, they actually had the stud, but they didn't have the lug nut. Um, you want to specify whether the stud you need is on the front uh, front axle, one of the front hubs, or the rear hubs, because it's actually different part numbers for each. Uh, I think the ones in the rear are probably a longer stud since the wheels are wider back there. So um, just make sure you get the right stud for whichever hub you have to re replace the stud on. And um, so mine's on the front left, as you can see, and these were three dollars and fifty cents for uh, a stud and then the new lug nut was eight dollars and thirty cents so it's really not that bad and then the other thing you're gonna need or I think you'll need is um, some washers uh, so when we put the new stud in obviously we're gonna have to pull it into the hub and so I'm going to use the lug nut to pull it in, but since we don't have the, uh, we're not going to have the rotor and the wheel on there as, cause that creates space. Cause I don't want to bottom out the lug nut on the stud. So just get some washers from, uh, I just got these at advanced auto parts. They're, um, seven sixteenths inch. Uh, and I got 12 in here. I'm, I'm not going to need that many, but we'll see how many I use to, to pull the stud into the hub. I'm hoping the hub's not damaged, the splines. So we'll see. So just have the wheel on while you're drilling that out. And then, uh, so now I'm gonna take this off. And then uh, I'm gonna have to take the brakes off, which I should just be able to take the caliper bolts loose and take that off as a whole assembly. And then you just wanna take your rotor off. So I'll show you guys how to do that now. Now that I have the wheel off, you can actually see the, the stud a lot better. Um, these are solid, and then you can see how this one just spins and is loose in here. So the next step is to get your uh, brakes off. 
So what we're going to do is um, just break loose these caliper bolts. Uh, there's just two. It's pretty simple. So to get better access to the caliper bolts, if you want to just um, turn your wheel, turn your wheel all the way to the left or as much as it'll go, that'll uh, give you a little bit more space to get to these caliper bolts back here. They're a 22, 22 millimeter. And then, um, so I just have a 22 millimeter socket and a, uh, a breaker bar. Um, they're both half inch. So the next step is just break those loose. So once you get the whole uh, brake caliper assembly off, uh, just have a bungee cord or something like this to hang the caliper. Um, it's really not good for your brake lines if you just let the weight of the caliper hang on the brake lines themselves. So um, just have something like that so you can hang the caliper out of the way while we uh, replace the stud. Once you get that off, your rotor should hopefully already be loose because there's nothing holding that down. Just when you have the wheel and the lug nuts on, that's what holds your rotor to the hub. So then just pull the rotor off. When you take the rotor off, uh, I would place it on something soft because you don't really want to scratch up the surface of it because uh, then you might start having brake issues and there's a whole list of things that that can cause but just put it on something that won't scratch the surface of your rotor what yeah uh, sorry about that my um my dad and stepmom just showed up so i lost my train of thought but yeah all i was saying was um just try to place the rotor on something soft and then or you could literally just place it upside down and have it resting on the hat here because I guess this surface isn't as important. But the point is just try not to scratch the surface of your rotor. So then the next step is just to get your stud out, which mine is spinning. So it um, just rotate the one that you need to replace to the front section here and it should just come out. Um, if yours isn't spinning and you're just replacing the stud for different reasons then if you just need a hammer and if you just hammer right on the head of the stud it should pop out and you can see here that the, uh, the splines are gone and then what I feared was that the splines in here would be damaged as well which they kind of do look pretty damaged um, so I'm gonna see if the new one with the good splines will hold in there or if it's going to spin but it's looking like the hub is pretty damaged at this point so you can see the um the difference in the old stud versus the new stud and how those splines are pretty much done so and then also just to verify that you have the right stud for the um, the hub that you're working on you can just hold it up to the an existing stud and it should be the same length which this one is so then you know you have the the right part number stud for the hub that you're replacing it on uh, so I didn't notice this before but if you look uh, right here the um, the backing plate right here actually has this little indent right here which I guess is actually for you to take out and put in new studs. Um, that's pretty nifty. 
So, I mean, mine isn't going in, so it might hold. Uh, I really don't want to go through the process of replacing my whole hub just because of this. So I'm going to try it this way and hope that it's alright. Uh, I know it might be a little sketchy because I know you might not be able to see, but the splines in here do look kind of gone. But um, um, So I just thought of another thing to let you guys know. When you take your, um, your brakes off, you know, this area here, technically this should be able to slide over your rotor when you put it all back together. Um, but just make sure that you, uh, when you have it hanging here like this, that you don't go press the brake pedal for any reason because then it's not going to go back on your rotor unless you have some kind of tool to spread the uh, piston from your caliper back out. Um, so it's just a heads up so you don't do that by accident. And um, so yeah. I looked at this more carefully and some of the splines are definitely gone and you can barely see some of them on this side. I really should get a new hub. I mean, I don't think there's any way to fix this. Um, the new stud, uh, it does, it doesn't go in This is kind of sketchy but I'm just gonna pull it through and hope that it holds because I don't want to go through the headache of getting a whole new hub um, maybe down the road I'll do that but for now just as a quick fix since these four are, are good the other four studs are good um, I'm gonna pull this through and see what happens um, I don't know, maybe that, I mean the fact that this isn't going all the way through yet makes me think that when I do pull it through, it actually might create like new indents in here that will hold it in place. Uh, let's just hope for the best. Um, Cause if you ever have the same situation as me where your stud was spinning, then your hub might be damaged the same way. Um, so I'm gonna try this and see what happens. And I'll let you guys know, so. So just uh, put your new stud in there. And then um, I'm using uh, five washers. And then just get your lug nut on there. I just tightened it down by hand. It moved in a little bit, but it's still not all the way. Uh, so since I'm unsure of whether or not this is gonna hold, um, having a torque wrench uh, doesn't really work here since this is just gonna spin on you. Um, I guess you could like use a breaker bar or something to hold in place like this, but then you might damage the threads on your other studs. So. The best way to do this, in my opinion, is if you do have just an impact. And um, the smallest uh, torque stick I have is 65 foot-pounds. So I'm going to start with that and see if it pulls it all the way in. Because I don't want to have the whole thing spinning again, but we'll see what happens. Yeah, 65 foot pound torque, torque stick uh, it did pull it all the way in as you can see over here um, you just want to you can see how these are flush um, now this one's flush since I pulled it in and then uh, to take your lug nut back off make sure you remove your torque stick because um using a torque stick in the opposite direction 
uh, like loosening and not tightening can actually damage your torch stick. So keep that in mind and try not to do that. is uh pretty snug in here um i'm kind of curious as to whether or not nissan might make the replacement studs with uh slightly larger splines for scenarios like this i'm not really sure but it seems to be pretty solid in there so yeah i'm gonna just roll with it and uh Put everything back together. And then when you put your rotor back on, if you want to just thread on a lug nut at the bottom to just hold it in place while you get your uh, brake caliper back on, that helps. So this thing's not wobbling around on you and almost falling off the studs. Put your caliper bolts back in. Um, I always start everything by hand. Uh, it prevents situations like this where you even have to, where I had to replace the stud and the lug nut. So, so the torque spec for the caliper bolts is 106 to 126 foot pounds, or at least that's what I found online. Um, it was from a Nissan tech in a forum, so I'm going to trust it. And uh, so I'm just going to go in the middle of that and just torque them down to 116 foot pounds. Um, I have a 3 8 torque wrench, but that only goes up to 100 foot pounds. So um, I also have a half inch which will go up to the 116 for me. So that's what I'm gonna use to torque these down. And then um, before you tighten it down, uh, I would just loosen this lug nut um, just so this isn't uh, tight at a certain angle and the rotor's kind of loose while you, so it allows you to tighten these down um, all the way because you don't want this lug nut holding the rotor on tight at an angle and then not actually tightening your caliper bolts um, the way they should be. So just loosen that lug nut if you did that same thing I did before uh, torquing down your caliper bolts. So now that I'm done with all that, I can finally rotate my uh, wheels. I already rotated the other side, so um, this is looking pretty solid. It doesn't move at all, so I think I might be all right with that. Um, and then now you can, uh, if you turn your wheel to the left, you can turn your ignition on and cycle the wheel back straight so you can get your wheels on.
lug nuts back on. I just have a torque stick for 100 foot pounds. Um, I know some of you might think that's a little high, but uh, I'd rather have my wheels on there good. I mean, there's people out there that aren't using torque sticks at all, so it's uh, it should be good. So as you can see, there's my new lug nut. This is the, the location of the new stud. And um, like I said, it's 100 foot pounds torque stick. And I mean, it's, uh, it's not budging at all. So I think it's good. Um, I'm gonna do some research, research and see if uh, those replacement studs are actually, have slightly larger splines for this kind of scenario. Um, I'll let you guys know what I find, but uh, thanks for watching and I hope this was helpful for anyone that was uh, stuck in the same situation as me. So, fanito. So I tried to do a lot of uh, research online whether or not um, the replacement studs did have bigger splines, but I couldn't find anything. I couldn't really find any, any information on the hubs either, so I just went to the local uh, Nissan dealership over at uh, Colonial Nissan off 29 um, here in Charlottesville, Virginia. And uh, two of the guys there were really helpful with answering all the questions I have. And as I feared, the hub should have good splines in there when you're replacing the stud to really hold it in place. So luckily, um, mine held in pretty good, as you saw in the video, even with uh, torquing it down to 100 foot pounds with my impact so I'm just hoping that next time I have to take the wheel off for anything that it'll that it won't spin off but if it does then I will need to get a new hub um, but uh, one of the guys over there did tell me that the new hubs they come with all the studs in it already so that's pretty convenient um, but it when I put the new stud in, it was it seemed like it held in pretty good. So hopefully, uh, I'd rather rock with it like that for a while if I can. So we'll see what happens and if uh, any changes are made, I'm sure I'll let you guys know. So thanks for watching, and I'll catch y'all later.